on 4K UHD, HDR, Blu-ray, and regular Blu-ray from Cauldron Films comes Lucio Fulci's 1980 gore extravaganza, City of the Living Dead. Gonna say up front, in general, I don't like Lucio Fulci movies. I've always found them to be really sloppy and ham-fisted and going, probing the wound gore, as I like to say, and, and kind of bad. And I know that's sacrilege for a lot of horror fans. But I must say, I'm warming to them. Uh, I don't know if it's because they're coming out in these really astounding editions like Cauldron has for this film, or, or if it's, if, if, I don't know if, if, my, if my standards are lowering, if my defenses are coming down, or if I'm just coming to appreciate these movies for what they are, probably more of that. But uh, that's just setting you up for this. So this is a film, this is 93 minutes. This is from 1980, as I said, partially shot in America, as a lot of the, the Fulci films were. They tended to be shot in the US for exteriors, and then they would go back to, to Italy, to Rome, to do the interiors. And they always had a mix of English-speaking and non-English-speaking actors. Here we have uh, Catriona McCall, who people would know from other Fulci films. Uh, Christopher George, who people would know from a lot of films in this era, uh, Giovanni Lombar Lombardo Radice, and probably a couple other, I think I think Fulci may be in this too somewhere, I can't recall. Uh, music by Fabio Fritzi, who is great, and uh, still tours actually. If you can ever see Fritzi play in America, you should. Super nice guy. Speaks English relatively well if you ever meet him. And he'll do these live scores of his film. So he'll play the score to his film while the movie is playing. Or he'll do a concert of all the themes from the various Fulci films he did. And he did a lot. And uh, I was able to see him live score uh, the Beyond at uh, Proctor's Theater in Schenectady, New York many years ago. And it was just amazing. And again, I wasn't particularly a Fulci fan. But the ability to see this kind of super famous Italian film composer who did films from the kind of genre and era that I like... Uh, have a band and do his stuff live was was just really amazing. So highly recommend that. So this disc is, as I say, it's a 4K UHD disc. So if you have a 4K player and a 4K TV, you can see this looking the best it'll ever look probably until 8K or 16K comes along. And a Blu-ray, which is the same content. So if you don't have a Blu-ray player you should and you like this movie, you really should get this set and just, you know, if you ever get a 4K player. I like that they do this. If you ever get a 4K player, well, cool, then you have a 4K disc. And if you never do, well, fine, you'll just play the Blu-ray. Audio is presented in DTS MA Mono, so the original sound mix, and uh, English SDH subtitles for those who need them. SDH, if you don't know, I always try, try to say this in case you don't know, is uh, English subtitles for the on-screen dialogue, but then they also, like in parentheses or italics, they'll tell you what other sounds are going on. So it just basically replicates, a, it's a verbal dis depiction of the soundscape for people who are uh, deaf or hard of hearing or want to multitask and listen to a Black Sabbath album while they watch a movie. So uh, this, this you can watch the English or the Italian version of the film on here. There are different audio language, uh, different audio, so it's either English or Italian audio. Obviously, English subtitles, you would use those SDH subs if you watch the Italian version, which I don't always love. I prefer regular English subtitles if I'm watching a subtitled film because for me, the, uh, you know, gunshot or whatever is distracting to me and sometimes will actually give away something that'll be subtitled or SDH subtitled before it happens on screen. Uh, in the on screen and end titles are English or Italian. So depending on which version you watch, if you watch the Italian version, you see the uh, on screen title, or I'm sorry, the the, uh, the US title of this film was Gates of Hell. The Italian on screen title is Paura Dash Nella Cita dei Morti Viventi, which is more or less is City of the Living Dead. So the basic story here, not going to give you the whole plot, is a woman, Catriona McCall, has this like psychic vision that something bad is going to be happening in this town of Dunwich, this little New England town. This is, you know, the Lovecraft reference, Dunwich horror and all that. Something is going to be happening bad in Dunwich and the dead are going to start rising and something needs to be done. The film opens with the priest hanging, as you know, fun for the family, a priest hanging himself in the cemetery in Dunwich and Christopher George kind of comes in to try to figure out what's going to happen or what's going on or who who's murdering people, dead or rising, weird, gross stuff is going on. And it's basically more or less, it's not technically a zombie movie, but it's more or less a Fulci zombie movie. Um, very, uh, very atmospheric. The gates of hell are opening, thus the American title. And uh, they're, they're racing to this town to try to stop it and try to stop the prophecy and all this stuff. So it's very spooky, very bad stuff's going down. Very gross, very gross. There's a moment in this film that incur occurs inside a pickup truck. Guy and a girl. The guy is uh, Michele, Michele Suave, who went on to make a lot of uh, horror films, including Cemetery Man, Della Morte, Della Morte, that a lot of people love. 
Um, he's an actor in this, and he, he, he did a lot of like acting in movies around this era and crew for Argento and other, other Italian filmmakers. It's him and a girl in a pickup truck in the dark at night, and then something happens, and her eyes starts crying blood, and then something really, really gross happens that at the time I first saw this movie was the most disgusting thing I'd ever seen on camera, and Fulci's good for that, disgusting. So I wouldn't necessarily eat pasta. I wouldn't necessarily eat cold noodles while you watch this film, just, just as, a, as a tip. So um, my notes here say, usual Fulci lack of sub subtlety over the top gore with solid Fabio Fritzi score. It is what it is. I know a lot of people love Fulci, so that, that's cool. Uh, I'm really reviewing this more for anybody who's curious as to what it is. I'm gonna give you my opinion, but I'm gonna tell you what you're getting with this set. Uh, the ending, so it's very atmospheric, very gross, really good score. Uh, it looks great. This looks, it's a beautiful restoration on this disc, whether you're watching the 4K or the Blu-ray. Personally, I'll, I'll watch the 4K disc because I have that ability. They never, to me, to my eyes, look that much better than Blu-ray, but I know they do. I know they're sharper. I think it depends on the movie where you're really gonna see that difference, but it, it looks great. It looks the best it's ever looked. They do the 4K mastering and then they do a Blu-ray version from that master, so the Blu-ray's gonna look equally the Blu-ray will equally be the best Blu-ray you've ever seen, while the 4K is just the best version of it you've ever seen. It's, it is nice to see how sharp these things can look. And sometimes they almost look like they have depth because they look so sharp. Uh, the ending is uh, a total WTF freeze frame that makes no real sense. And in going through all the extras, nobody had a really great explanation as to why the movie ends the way it does. People can theorize as to what it might mean, but I think it really feels like, you know, the film ran out. <laughs> it feels like they forgot to shoot an ending and then just tried to, the editor tried to cobble something together to sort of give it a little at the end of the film, a Victor Borga at the end of the film. And it is what it is. So it's a, if you like the Italian zombie films, if you like the Italian gore films, if you like Fulci, if you know the movie, obviously you're going to want this set. Let me dig into the extras, which are voluminous. Cauldron's really cool. Cauldron has sort of come out of nowhere to do these really solid editions that can go toe to toe with any other Blu-ray company in these releases. And it's really, it's really cool to see. It's cool to see new companies come along and get some of these for, for the world of cult cinema, I'm gonna say A-list titles and do as good a job as anybody else, if not better. So extras, set aside some time if you wanna dig into the extras. Commentaries, we have four commentaries that run the entirety of the film. Uh, commentary by film historian Sam Deegan, who's a big fan of Fulci and a big fan of this film. So I'm not going to say Fulci apologist, but it's one of those things where if you're like me and you're you, you're like, well, tell me why Fulci's great, uh, you'll you'll get that from this. And it is cool also to hear it from the point of view of somebody who discovered Fulci at a certain time in their life on home video and how that excitement of trying to see more and find out more and all that. She's always great anyway, so Sam Deegan commentary is always worth listening. Sp similarly true of uh, film historian commentary by Troy Howarth and Nathaniel Thompson. They're always fun. Uh, you get a commentary with Catriona McCall, moderated by Jay Slater. That's very interesting, and she's very... Serious isn't the right word. She's very honest about her experience with Fulci and working on the film, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Overall, she looks back fondly, but at the time, I think if you interviewed her right after the movie ended, she might not have. And uh, that's very interesting. Commentary with actor uh, Giovanni Lombardo Radice, moderated by Callum Waddell. He's interesting, he speaks English, uh, so all the commentaries are in English. Once in a great while, you'll get a commentary on a film where the uh, presenters or the participants don't speak English and essentially have to read the commentary while the film is playing. I always like to try to do something else while I'm listening to a commentary, so it's always a, a minor bummer to me if they're subtitled because it's like I have to just sit here and watch the movie again. All the commentaries are good. All the commentaries, not a lot of re repetition, which is always, again, high marks to me when a film has multiple commentaries and it either works out or they engineer it so that the commentators are all just sharing the same stories over and over again. So you get something out of listening to all of these as a whole or individually. There is a second disc of extras. So that's all on disc one. It's the movie and the commentaries. Uh, let me make sure that that's true. Yes. So the only extras on disc one are which version of the film you're going to watch in the commentaries. Disc two, again, get yourself a cushion. Zombie Kings, interview with Massimo Antonello Gelang. He was the production designer. That's 46 minutes long. Requiem for Bob, interview with Giovanni Lombardo Radice, who we lost, I think, within the last year or two. That's 28 minutes long. 
the meat munching movies of Gino De Rossi, 26 minutes. That's the FX man on the uh, Fulci and other gore films. Then, and that's really cool too, because he goes through his workshop and he basically pulls out props that were used in the movie. Then they'll cut to the scene in the movie that I used him. And then you can see the prop now that like the guy just kept it all. It's really cool. Uh, Carlo of the living dead an archival interview with actor Carlo De Mejo. That's 18 minutes on stage Q and a with, uh, Venantino, Venantini and Rogero Diodato. That's 46 minutes minutes he played the man who who does something to Radice in this film it's a very amusing Q&A he is a very randy elderly man he has a lot of memories and he worked on a lot of movies with a lot of people so you get a lot of anecdotes throughout you know American Italian European film history and a lot about about randy subjects let's just say dirty old man it was a lot of fun uh Katrian McCall Q&A from the Glasgow theater with Callum Waddell moderating that's 20 minutes you get uh, music for a Flesh Feast, Fabio Fritzi Q&A, that's 29 minutes. Catriona McCall archival video intro for a different video release of the film, that's five minutes. A trip through Bonaventure Cemetery, Savannah, Georgia, which was where the dead were rising in this film, where the, a lot of the film was shot. Uh, that's five minutes. It's uh, new footage, new drone footage moving through that cemetery set to the score. Archival interviews with the cast and the crew from uh, the documentary Paura, Lucio Fulci, Remember Volume 1, that's 42 minutes which it has to be like a big, sizable chunk of the runtime of that film. Uh, trailers, you have the six, it's six minutes of trailers that just play one after the other. You get the Gates of Hell US trailer, which is always cool to see how it was uh, constructed and sold to US audiences and the wonderful 1980 American voiceover actor who did it, the voiceover announcer is a voice I love. Uh, English City of the Dead trailer and Italian trailer for the film. An image gallery that runs nine minutes. Easter eggs. There are Easter eggs. I still look. I still look on everything I get for Easter eggs. There are uh, the Easter eggs. Okay. I hate to give it away. I want to I just say, hey, there are Easter eggs. You should find them. But I want to tell you what they are. One Easter egg is the original full-length Gates of Hell version from a VHS tape. So if you want to re-experience what it was like for most of us who first saw this movie renting it from a local independent video store, you pop that in. It's 92 minutes of Gates of Hell. It... To me, I feel like it could look better, and then people are gonna be like, ah, it's VHS, it always looked terrible. VHS didn't always look terrible in, in the day. This kind of feels like a copy of a copy or a copy that maybe got digitized at some point. It doesn't look to me as good as it could in terms of, again, video transfers are what they are from this era, but it, it, to me, it, it doesn't look like it was taken directly from a rental tape at the highest quality. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was a beat up rental tape. I don't know. But anyway, if you want the, the fuzzy v, the fuzzy VHS aesthetic, that's there. And then this was amazing that they did this and they have disclaimers. It is the complete 1964 Christopher George Playgirl article and layout. Yes, there are words. So if you ever wanted to see Christopher George naked in 1974, Cauldron Films has made your dreams come true. And they have a, a spoiler right up front. They're like, this is going to be naked. You're going to be seeing naked Christopher George here. Click through at, at your own discretion. And you mean, know, a man of curiosity, I did. And Christopher George, very proud man. So this, oh, let me show you what it looks like. Because uh, packaging is cool too. So you get original, new original artwork on the front and the back. You get the, the sleek black 4K case. You uh, crack her open. And it's one of these hinged dealies, so you get the, the disc. So one of the one is the uh, 4K disc, one is the Blu-ray equivalent, so all the contents are the same in the Blu-ray, and the other is the bonus disc. You get a little tuck-in for the Cauldron Films uh, catalog, and yes, you get a reversible cover. So the front, the, the, the retail display is this, and then you swap it over and you get that. So it's another uh, bit of new artwork that uh, references that aforementioned scene in the movie that uh, showing you the least gross part of that scene in the movie. So available now on Blu-ray from Cauldron Films. Blu-ray and 4K UHD HDR from Cauldron Films is Lucio Fulci's 1980 gore masterpiece, City of the Living Dead, a.k.a. Gates of Hell.